Peter McDonald, former St Johnston, Morton and Dundee striker. Yeah. How you doing, alright? <laughs> I'm good, mate. I'm good. How's yourself? Yeah, mate. Not bad. Not bad. Making the most of it. Making the most of it the best we can. Um, have you managed to, to see much football recently? Yeah, or are you, like the rest of us, not being able to get in? Uh, no, I've been fortunate enough uh, today. I've been doing the co-commentary for St Johnston TV. I think it's on four or five occasions, and I was at Ibrox on Wednesday, so I managed to get into that. Uh, I've been to a Morton game, I went to Morton v Hearts uh, mm-hmm. at Capelo. Uh, but other than that, it's only St Johnston and Morton games I've been uh, managed to get to. That's just the two games you've mentioned, they've both been defeats for the teams that you were there for, I'm guessing, so it's not been not been that good luck for you, has it? <laughs> no, well, the, the Morton game was, I think it was 2-0. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously on Wednesday was 1-0 uh, but to be fair both of them were poor games uh, if I'm being honest so I mean, probably ones would be better after in the house but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm blessed enough to, to blessed enough to be, able to, to be able to get in so no of course of course very very privileged to be in games just now aren't we it's, it's not the same is it without fans there it's just so quiet and so eerie well it's horrendous just it's false and just shows you fans make football, mate. Oh, of course, of course. I think, yeah, I think you can agree in saying that the the tempo's just not been there at all, hasn't it? The games have just been so flat. It's been flat as anything. It's still been, it's it's still been really. How do you say it? It, it, it doesn't feel feels that friendly, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And you can hear every every word in the pitch. Yeah. The, the, what the players are saying. So it's just, it's just it was pretty pretty surreal, and uh, hopefully. We can get this vaccine sorted out, get it dished out quickly, and get people back to games. Of course, yeah, can only can only hope. Um, so to talk a bit about your career, obviously you came through came through the youth ranks at, at Rangers, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I came through there from well, nine year old. I was there until I was twenty. Oh, that's some upbringing in it. Obviously, you were in and around the the, the, the glory years, kind of, weren't you? It was it was uh, when I went full full time at fifteen. I was uh, I went a year early. Managed to get in a year early from left school, uh, and it was Walter Smith. It was the the year nine, ten in a row. It stopped. Uh, Celtic win the league that year, so that was that was the year uh, my first year. Then Avocat came in at the end of that year, uh, and things just went and changed, didn't they? For for the the better for, for Rangers fans uh, the, the players they brought in were on a different level to be honest uh, what, what was it like working under like oh, obviously Walter Smith for a year and then Dick Advocate like, it must have been totally different from what you were used to as a, as a YTS well as a kid you're, you're sort of you're in awe of Walter you know even to this day you know I still call him Gaffer he's my first manager my first job was in cleaning his room cleaning his boots putting the, the toast out for him uh, you know, basically being in a beckoning call for the, for the full duration of the day when I was in training. Uh, and what was get a sore about him where, you know, you just get a presence where you, you stand up and take notice of the guy. Uh, and when we Dick, uh, he was just a wee, he just buzzed about uh, the place. And he was actually, he was actually all right, you know, he was, he was fine. We had to call him boss. Uh, Whereas what was gaffer, but no, it was it was good to to play under two two managers or beat the club. Sorry, under two managers that were probably top of the game. And, and there's so much. Um, I guess there's so much pressure when you come through a club like Rangers as well. Like the success that they expect you to have right from from day dot must be a lot to handle. Oh, it was instilled into us. Winning was the only thing, you know. Uh, not, don't play well. Just doesn't matter. Just go and try and find a way to win. Rangers players win games, and they find a way to win games. And through the years, then they did find ways to win leagues, and uh, and that continued with, with, with me all the way through my career. But it was instilled when I went to Rangers. You know, second best isn't an option. It's Glasgow Rangers are playing for, and winning is, is a must. You know, you know, it's no hard luck stories there. You win, uh, and that is a be all and end all. Yeah, and I mean. Uh... <laughs> The fact that you're saying you came through when the, the year that ten in a row was stopped, that must have just intensified like so so much because that's it's it's a it's, a, it's, it's like getting shot in it like it's 
kind of killed you and instead you have came came back even stronger and obviously through Dick Advocat signed the players that, that signed and had the successes that followed. Right, it was it, it was obviously disappointing and being a fan as well, growing up and going to all the all the games. I went to all the games and no getting it, but uh, that's that's a different generation now. Then Advocat came in and played a new sort of rise. Uh, won the league straight away. I think he won the treble the first season with the right? Uh and built an unbelievable squad, which challenged in Europe to a certain degree. Uh, but you know, it's Rangers are always again, like I says, if it's no winning leagues or winning cups, there's, there's no point being it. You're no better just player. In fact, if you just think you can turn up, if unless you're winning week in week out, then that pressure's put on you for the fans and the management staff and the, and, and the club as, as itself. Then you'll you'll never survive at Rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, was there any players that like yeah. the, the foreign imports as such that were were any of them really good to you when you were coming through? Like, did you learn a lot from them? Obviously, the pedigree that they had was, was ridiculous. Uh, there were some great ones who were who were brought to me, me as a kid. You know, uh, starting Derek McInnes was was outstanding with me. Alan McCoy, Dean Durant. Uh, then you go to foreigners. Uh, Tony Vidmar was a good guy. Andy Gorham, my first year. Uh, Lionel Shaboni, I got I got fairly friendly with him uh, when I was there. Uh, the French World Cup winner. Uh, mm-hmm. It was I think second choice in the in the tournament. Uh, I think you were turn. He was a top top guy. We we mean him were injured at the same time and did rehab together. Johnny Johansson, you're, you're all top boys. You get a few uh, ones who didn't really pay much attention to the to the kids, but there was there was more. Than enough that did pay a bit of attention and sort of guided you and gave you advice if needed be. Mm-hmm. And the way that the way that these guys work as well, like the, the way they go about their business and training and then playing as well, you're just sitting there going, Jesus Christ, they're outstanding, aren't they? I was. I will, see, majority of days we would have been training with the, the youths and the reserves when the first team were training, uh, and if the afternoon sometimes the first team were in for the afternoon and. You would go up and watch the training. You would collect balls. It was that was your sort of your job to go and collect the balls for the first team, and you would watch the the training, and you would see it's at a different level from what you were used to in the academy. Uh, so in the academy and the as the resis and in the youth team, mm-hmm. you know, just it was just a step step above. And I mean, there isn't really a, like you don't see a lot of clubs doing stuff like YTS anymore, do you? Like the youth team are so far apart for the first team and almost like. How's the way from them? Do you think that's maybe a, a, a downfall in football these days that the kids aren't getting that sort of the grounding that they used to get? Uh, well, I know because it's good that the, you can get in about the first team and, and you can be at the time we were coming through. It was at Ibrox pre changed, you know, it wasn't Murray Park. Uh, mm. You were in the away dressing room getting changed, first team and in the home dressing room. So you were mingling with them every day. You were doing stuff for them, getting up, uh, doing their jobs and getting a kit out and things like that. But then, that was good, but then some, because you take it for granted that you were in there with them and you didn't earn the right to be in there. You know, you need to work your way from one area to the next area, which is usually like Murray Park now, it's, it's youth bit, youth development side, and then you go round the corner to the first mm-hmm. team. You need to earn the right to go round the corner. Uh, although you didn't have to do it when I was coming through, but it was more the players were there, easy access to and have a bit of banter with and things. and. Uh, you, because nowadays the kids don't do any jobs, they don't clean boots, they don't put a kit out, or, uh, whereas we, we had to interact for them, and that was part of your job. And I mean, it, it, it helps um, it helps give a mental edge to your game, doesn't it, for such a young age? Like, you're, you could be in a dressing room, you're getting slaughtered off a guy who's so maybe like five, ten years older than you, and you, it, it, it not so much makes a money because you can't really say that these days, but it, it does just prepare you for the, the adult world, doesn't it? Person for real football, and as simple as that. I was, I went in 15 and I was playing sometimes in the, the resis, getting 25 minutes in the resis as a sub, as a 15 year old boy playing against. I remember playing against Brian Martin, who was retiring at the time, who's an older Murwell centre back. Uh, I think Carol Reddy would have been maybe if I'm there at the time. You know, older experienced men who would, would just come through you. Alan mm-hmm. Kearney, who was one at St. St. Johnson, played against him. Uh, no, it was, it, it was real football. It told you that, again, it goes back to setting standards. 
when a first team player's on at you in the res, he's, he's, he's on at you because it's to help you and you, to, for you to react and, and show that you're learning from him is not to make the mistakes you, you do. So if you if the quicker you can stop those mistakes, then you're going to improve as a player. And a lot of first team players took the time. I okay the shift that you and said, come on, it's not good enough or get your finger at your arse or things like that. Mm-hmm. And there was some players who didn't like it as kids growing up. But it was a realism that that's the environment you're in. You, it, from 16, you can be up, you can be playing football on a first team stage. Then you need to become a man. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no so no as much now, uh, where I think the academy structure this thing out where it's friendlies to play. Uh, and I've, I've been involved in the academy at Murray Park for uh, up until last year, five years I was there. Uh, and it's friendlies. So there's no tournament. It's, there's no points played for. There's no trophies won. And I think that's a big part of you're teaching kids. It's all right to to play a friendly with the end, the end product. That, and it. You know, where if you're playing for trophies, cups, you, you know what you need to do. You know, there's, there's a trophy at the end of it. If your performances aren't good enough, then you don't win the trophy, which leads to you maybe no getting a contract, a new contract, or maybe if you're getting released, another club at a certain level. Uh, and academy football, I think, nowadays is it's the worst thing that could have happened, no playing for any trophies. Yeah, I mean... Effectively, that has a knock-on effect all the way through, doesn't it? Like, obviously, I know you've got performance skills in that now, but obviously, if you've got kids coming through an academy set up like that, then it, it kind of makes you you wonder why. Not that it kind of like, gives you a good idea why maybe like the Scotland national team hasn't really performed as good as it has over the last like twenty years or so since they last qualified for a tournament. Obviously, I know this year's an exception, but over a generation of people haven't haven't seen Scotland Scott qualify for a tournament. I think it's. We're in a generation now where we kind of tell people the truth because we're scared to hurt their feelings. Uh, if you kind of tell a kid who's no performing to the level he should be to be at that club, then you're giving the kid, I would probably say, false hope. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that he's going to be there. But unless you can come in on the level and say to him, listen, your standards aren't good enough, you need to get them up uh, and see how they react from it. You know, it's a jag, if it's, if it's a, a small jag. But nowadays, it's, it's all right. You can turn up, go to a tournament abroad, uh, a 20-team tournament, finish 18th, 19th, uh, get a trophy and come home. You know, and it's come back, you know, the knockout stages that would have been. You're at home with nothing when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. But now it's, mm-hmm. you're coming back and you're uh, playing the friendship games. Come back tomorrow and play the friendship games, you know. That's, that's the reality of it. Yeah, um, and I mean, from Rangers, you then went on to St Johnston, where you spent it was ten years at St Johnston, wasn't it? Not? It was ten years, aye. Two thousand ten. Yeah. Not a lot of players can say that they spend that that amount of time at, at one club, can they? It's, I mean, uh, players that come to mind are Jim and Midge, who are well, Jim's obviously just left Morton, and, and Midge is still there, and he's been doing it over. You can say for two clubs, he spent at least ten years there. Aye, Midge is. It's, it's a rare, a rare occurrence. Obviously, I played with two of them. I played with Jim at Dundee and I played with Midgey for like four years at St. Johnson, five years maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm unsure. Uh, no, it doesn't happen that often now. Uh, people chase the buck. Uh, and if you're good enough, and quite rightly so. Uh, I think me at my time at St. Johnson was hampered with injuries, bad injuries. Uh, but I still managed to do enough in parts of the seasons where I earned a new contract uh, due to my ability, you know, if I'm being honest. Uh, but a lot of people now, if they're doing well, five years at a club, and they want to move on and into bigger and better things, and quite rightly so, get a better financial offer uh, if it's down the road or if it's a bigger club in Scottish Prem. Uh, and I mean, did you, 10 years at a club like St Johnston, it kind of shows the, the, the values of the club that the, the values that the club have, and it obviously felt right for you at the time as well to, to, to really feel at home there. It was, a, it was a brilliant club, a great family run club. Uh, from a chairman, Jeff Brown, to when he stepped down to his son Steve, you know, and the directors, uh, Big Stan and Roddy Grant, to a, a latter, a, a latter he came in and it was just a brilliant club, an absolute brilliant club, uh, which attracted good managers, you know, 
because of the club. Uh, and the club will never go into debt. We, Jeff, never ran it in debt. And I'm pretty sure Steve won't do that either. Uh, but no, it's 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 a, a great decision for me when I left Rangers when the offer to, to go there when they said they were going to buy me was was a great a great option. And uh, I'm glad I went and it was 10 years of a joy, to be honest. Uh, and it's, 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 it's a totally different world going from, from Rangers to, to Medema Park, and it like with no disrespect to St Johnston, like you're going for you're going for a place like Ibrox to to, to a stadium that's on the outskirts of on the outskirts of well what I know anyway, it's Medema Park on the outskirts of Perth anyway. So it, it it must have been not so much a reality check, but it must have been like a good grounding for you as well. Well, I had to I had to leave to, to make my mark in the, the first team environment. Uh, I wasn't going to play at Rangers. I was offered a two year deal and never I never took it up. Uh, then I had to wait for somebody to buy me. Uh, St Johnston bought me 125 grand, they paid it. Well, you know what, I'm I'm driving up the A9 to prepare for my agent. Uh, never never did I think I would go any, I was going to last ten years there. Uh, but I had to do that for me to show that I could play first team football at a young age. You're fairly young, twenty year old, and uh, cement my place in a, a team, uh, albeit an aging team, but a team that well, the year before had played Monaco in Europe. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Which is, I mean, coming off the back, of, uh, it's like similar to Rangers. You've came off the back of a significant event happening. You think you went to St Johnston, that's obviously happened. It's it's again meeting those standards, isn't it? It is. Uh, when you went to a first team environment, there is standards set by older pros and I'm and it's good. You know, you, you you need to follow what they're saying until you earn the right to say something. And that was the, the back in the, the good old days, you know. Uh that's come back twenty years ago now when I first went. Um but nowadays you some players play play five to ten games in the first team and it's I'm talking about coming on for twenty minutes and they think they've done it and made it and they're chirpy. Uh, which w- wouldn't have happened back then. Uh, you would have got slapped or you would have got held up against it. the wall with your throat and your legs off the ground. Not that it happened. <laughs> seen it happen. I could have seen it. it. It makes you grow up quickly, doesn't it? And then wise up as well. Ah, it's just a, a respect. That's what it is. It's just a respect. Uh, respect the older pros and they'll show you the same respect by also teaching you Things on the pitch that they you could have done or should have done, you know, and you'll see it from a different angle. And the strange thing is, but as I got older, I ended up being sort of similar where I had to <laughs> coach the young boys, and you know, it's just things that happen through experience. Uh, and I'm sort of I'm glad that I I learned through older pros at, at Rangers, and also when I went to St Johnston, there's a lot of a good guys here, uh, Paul Kane, Jim Weir. Uh, guys had good careers in the game, Wally, Wally Faulkner, Dan Jackson. Uh, so I'd, I'd learnt for all of them. And despite it, like obviously you said, it was, you, had a, you had a few injuries at St Johnston. There was still a lot of good memories there, wasn't there? I mean, I think, didn't you just get promoted during that time? Or am I maybe thinking a bit too late for that? No, no, we got, we got relegated the first year. When the first year I went, as a, I was 20, and we got promoted six years later, uh, back to the, the, champ, yeah, the Premier League. Um, They've remained there ever since. And obviously, like the ex- going from relegation, like the the, the club could have, like obviously we've seen what clubs like Partick Thistle have endured. They've, they've went down, and the the effects of that have really hit them for a couple of years to then go down again. But to then yeah. have the character to go back up has been has been good, doesn't it? Like obviously they they stabilised, competed, and then straight back up again. Aye, but look where they are again now. It's the same thing that's happened. They're, Premier League and we did the first division and then they get relegated again so they've got all that to do uh, again where it would be good if you could, could define a bit of consistency like St Johnson you know, like St Johnson have done uh, I think it's 2008 we went up so that's 12 year in the, the Scottish Premier League and again like I said they would, there's no running any debt or they're not doing anything out of their means uh, a Scottish they won the Scottish Cup they're in another final end of this month so all things going good up there, and some clubs could maybe take a wee note of that, uh, how to structure a club before getting into debt and run it properly, you know? I, I think it was well documented with Tommy Wright, wasn't it? Um, 
he was he's very he's, he was very keen to go like I've worked within my budget I've never I've hardly went over my budget and we're, we're operating we're operating a top six side and a bottom six like on bottom six funds so it kind of just shows the job that he did when he was there yeah yeah it's yeah and and it's, it's you don't get the, the praise that maybe should come uh, until somebody leaves like Tommy's left there albeit Callum's and did really well uh, but Tommy is a legend at St Johnson and, and he will be uh, all his days the Scottish Cup winner and for what he achieved there with the, again the salaries and the, the, the players they got in was, was remarkable Aye um, and I mean what was it like winning promotion as well must have been that must be obviously I know you've won you've won titles at, at Dundee and, and Morton as well but getting promoted with St Johnson it must have been good as well because that would have been your, your first one uh, The first one that I won was the under twenty ones at Rangers, the the under twenty one league, reserve league. Right. Uh, and that, up until I went to St John's, you know, oh, it's a, a big cup, you know, the best feeling ever. Then when you, I won the league with uh, St John's, I was injured for a majority of that season, uh, and I think I only played about sixteen games or something, but got enough to get a medal. Uh, wasn't playing in the final day when we won it, so uh, it was great to know we were going back to Premier League. I was going back to the Premier League. But really, I didn't enjoy it as much because I never played as much and I never didn't feel part of it. Whereas when I went to Dundee, I played every single game except one. Scored the winning goal to win the league. Uh, nominated for play of the year with, with, with my peers. So that's the sort of thing I enjoyed more because I was involved more. I played a bigger partner. I think but oh that's what people God. don't realise about football, isn't it? Not like when you're out injured, it's a very like lonely and isolated experience. People don't realise it. Like when you're injured, you're, you're kept away from the group mostly, and you're sitting in the gym yourself or sitting with a physio. Like physios become your best pal at one point, especially if it's a long term, isn't it? Oh well, I've been <laughs> I've been unlucky enough to have that throughout my career, where I spent long periods of time uh, doing my knee, break my foot. Getting, I think I've had 19 total 19 operations. So uh, I spent a lot of time with, with the physios, and you do, you you do end up in a, a bit of a dark place. But there's certain stages when you're doing, you get your injury. So the first part of your injury is your, it's your darkest bit. Then you realise how long you're going to go out. You get even darker. But once you get your surgery, and you realise six weeks later oh, you're doing the exercises, that's the first bit of light that you get. And six weeks later again, you're maybe running then. A month later, you're back training. So the light, each stage, it's different stages. The, the bits of light shine through, and you, you know there's something to aim for. And then that day, you go back on the training field the first time with the boys. As you realise that all the fitness what you did is leads leads to this moment when you're back in the pitch. You know, so it's 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 tough going, but it's uh, it's good that physios, a lot of physios guided me through it. You know, and stood by me and were on the phone and. But I, I, I had never had a, an attitude where I wanted to, to chuck it or feel sorry for myself. My first, my first thought was get fit, get back, get back in here, and go and prove yourself that you can get back in that team. I know, no, no, no. Um, and I mean, like it is like obviously as you said, it's that, that first day back at training, it's it's, it's like a sense of relief in it. It's it's just something you've worked extremely hard for over the period of time you've been out. Because remember, you've got to maintain your fitness. You've lost fitness. You've lost muscle, mm-hmm. mass in your legs, your arms. You need to get your body fat down. You need to watch your diet. Then you need to come back and try and get up to speed. You know, the first the first week of training, your adrenaline will get you through it. But then after that, that's when the fitness has got to kick in. And the adrenaline's nose is there. Is sorry, is there was much that is there. It's your fitness has got to take over. So all the hard work you did three weeks, four weeks prior. It's, it's coming to fruition at the, at the training session. Yeah, uh, and obviously, as you said, Dundee um, was a really good spell for you. Well, obviously, I know I'm not really going in order now. I've skipped the first spell at Morton, but Dundee was, was really good for you, wasn't it? Obviously, as you said, scoring goals, playing there enough every week, and you felt, well, obviously, you've, you've gone up as well. So that must was that possibly one of the, the best spells of your career that you think you've had? It was. Uh... I'd probably say from the year, the, the six months prior to going to Dundee, when I came back to Morton, mm-hmm. uh, I think I scored 15 goals in 15 games or something. Uh, then when I went to Dundee, I scored 20, 22. So 
I think it was like 37 goals in like 54 games or 52 games, which is quite a good ratio. Uh, and I knew at Dundee we had a team that I was going to, which was going to challenge for the, the, the championship to get back to the Premier League. And that's what happened, uh, albeit in the last day of the season. But it was, it was the best year of my life, football-wise, and also uh, due to my son being born. My first son was born, uh, Lyle. So to just to uh, top it all off, uh, winning the league and, and scoring the last uh, the, the, the goal to take your, your team back up the Premiership was a dream come true. And it was that, that, that dressing room at Dundee obviously had to, to go through the mill, didn't it? Obviously there was a whole load of stuff going on in the background that year and um, to, to, go and win, to, to obviously go and win the league was, was a fantastic achievement. Well, it was. It was like I said before, though, we, we, we thought we had a good enough squad to go and do it. Uh, and when I went there, I, I knew, you know, I, I had options. And once I heard, I knew Dundee were in, which I'd been speaking to him prior to leaving Morton, to talk about pre contract and that. Uh, that I knew that was the, the club I was wanting to go to because they were going to take me in the Premier League or that season if they get relegated. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm set my mindset on Dundee. And my man, old, my old coach at Rangers was there, John Brown. So that had a big deciding factor in me going there as well. Mm-hmm. And obviously, as you said, scoring the goal that clinched the title. That's the words can't describe how how you must have felt that day, surely. That was incredible. It was uh, very emotional, to be honest. Uh, playing, like I said, every minute, every game. Well, sorry, no, every minute, every, every game bar one. Uh, I had a big part to play in it. And my family being there, and it was just a relief because I wanted to win it so much. My son was there, uh, my mom, my mom, and to win it and be involved on the pitch, rather than just being in the stand being injured, you know, it, it was a it was a different class, you know. I, lo- I loved it, and it's a day that, you know, it, it's probably my most, I'd probably say my my best career moment in football was was winning that game. And, and lifting the trophy, and even the week that followed it, won the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, people don't hear about those stories, do they? They're the ones that are, no. that's, that's the untold side of football that, that people very much enjoy. It's not a PG rating, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to win the league in that, in that way as well, I think, it went, as you said, it went down to the final day, didn't it? Um, I think it was, who else was it that was fighting for it? It was... Hamilton. Um, Hamilton, aye. And that was aye. that was the year that was the 8-2 game, wasn't it? I'm not thinking wrong. 10-2? 10 10-2, sorry, aye. 10-2, sorry. Aye, so which... so you, did you know about that in the park? That it was going that, that well? No, or? we never knew. We never knew what happened was half-time, we were 2-0 up cruising. We just had to win. So we're 2-0 up cruising, playing excellent. Uh, and the boys are saying, oh, Hamilton are winning 5-1. I was like, oh, all right, are they? And... I think a few of the boys were going, wow, Morton, what's, what, 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 what's been wrong with Morton? Pardon me. And, uh, and you're yeah, playing, <clears throat> playing the game, playing the game, and obviously the crowd seeing things, uh, and you can sort of sense a wee change in atmosphere. Then we get away a penalty, they score, I don't score, and it's probably say for 15, 20 minutes, the game to go, back to the wall, you know, then uh, you you could just tell even later that Hamilton had scored to make it 10. Uh, but it was a crowd getting on your backs a wee bit. Come on. Uh, then Kyle Lehrer, the last kick of the ball, Kyle Lehrer, I don't know if you've seen the save. Uh, cross the ball, cross in, Brian Fronty gets up, Bob Huffington heads it, mm-hmm. and he goes into the corner, and he's tipped it, his finger tipped around the post, and uh, the final whistle went after that. So then the pitch was just, it was crazy scenes. <laughs> But knowing that must like, a result like that, ten two, like obviously it's a freak score. Like, obviously, well, maybe not this season. It's not a freak score line. But back in back then, you're just thinking like anything could have happened at that point, couldn't you? You're, you're, you're... Well, I just think it was Kenny Shields that came in, wasn't it? Uh, aye, aye. And for a team to lose ten two, it's something's got to have went wrong. Surely uh, Douglas and Crawford Ray could have seen that. The players didn't want to play for, for, for them, and even results leading up to that. Because uh, we were bottom in the league, things weren't going right. You know, brought in a few players that you'd probably say high earners that shouldn't have brought in. 
Uh, and he lost 10 2. It was embarrassing, to be honest. It was absolutely embarrassing for Morton. Uh, and people were, I can see why people are thinking, oh, is that a fix? Is that a fix? You know, is it rigged? I know it's no rigged. It's, it's, you just get somebody that's saying that. Uh, game's definitely no rigged. Because you look at you look at Doug Emery, he'd mm-hmm. signed a pre contract mm-hmm. with Hamilton and scored the two goals. You know what? But hey ho, it's it's certainly done me now and, and Morton are in the championship and well to be honest, in a no better situation uh, financially. Uh, but that's for a that's for another topic. I know, I know. It's a bit, yeah. It's a bit of a mess, which we'll which we'll go into. But your first spell at Morton, um, I was looking on, I was looking on. Unfortunately, Wikipedia, obviously not the most reliable sources, but you had a goal every other game at Morton, and you were saying even though you had a wee like, spell injuries there as well, like that's um, that's impressive to, to have a sort of record like that. Ah, it's, I, I, I'd left. I've been let go for St. Johnson. I had to prove myself again, and. I think I started the season really, really well. I think I scored eight goals in six games or something like that. It was ridiculous. Uh, and, I th- and overall, over the season, I think I scored 15, uh, 15 goals, which is no bad first ret- return uh, in, the, in the league. Then the following year, I, I, I didn't play until the Christmas time because I'd mm-hmm. plant a fasciitis mm-hmm. in my foot. I get surgery on it. And I come back again. I, I come back and fire. Uh, again, it was something stupid, like 11 goals in like eight games. Uh, and that's when I sort of had uh, been speaking to them day after that, and I knew, but I, I knew I had to keep performing because we could have won the league that year uh, if if we added. I thought we would have because it was a time at Christmas time with a small squad of eighteen. I think neither respect to others, you're starting eleven or twelve. We're a good start. Yeah, picked ourselves. Injuries, there's a couple of replacements who weren't they quite up to scratch to the starting 11. Uh, but Christmas time is the time to add. And I think if, if the club, and I say that God rest Douglas Ray, uh, but having Crawford could have added a couple of decent players that would have got us over the line because Confirmon went bust. Mm-hmm. Andy Dowie signed for uh, Hamel, uh, Patrick Thistle. Jordan McMullen signed for Patrick Thistle. Uh, players who were very, very decent. He yeah, plays for Port now, that Jordan McMullen. Does he play with Port now? Right? Uh, I just thought if we added, you know, we, we could have won. We could have definitely won the league, uh, but we didn't. And you, were, uh, you brought young, younger players and, and maybe players, like I said, who weren't quite as good as what they should have been. Or, sorry, one of the quite is going to start eleven. Aye. Coming in at full play, full positions, and that's that was the wee bit of weakness. We didn't have a big enough squad, uh, maybe thirteen or fourteen that could start every week. We don't. We only had eleven, mm. uh, and it picked itself. And to uh, talk about certain players, obviously, I think the whole the whole thing against Partick Thistle. What well, was Young View? I think uh, they had the t-shirts in the final day, didn't they? Like obviously. Oh, uh, they, you speaks experience. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Um, but of the, there was guys in your squad. Um, we Fred for one. How yeah. good is it to play with somebody like him? Because could you have imagined the the career that he's going on to have? Uh, no, generally not. I knew Fred. Fred was decent. Uh, he's still a young, a youngish boy. Uh, Fred could get about the pitch. Great tackler, good passer. But Fred had to add goals to his game. That was what. He was box to box, and he never. I think he, he couldn't one hand when he scored at Morton. Uh, and if you want to take down the, the next stage, go to the next level, you need to add. I, I think as a box to box, you need to add goals. Uh, but the wee man's went. He went to Sweden, didn't he? Ostersunds uh, and Malmo. At uh, Ostersunds, Malmo. Then he's been all for Nottingham Forest there. In the summer, yeah. He's saying for Nottingham Forest. In the summer. I don't know if I've not seen him play. I think he's been injured. I think injured, he's played, think he's played once and then had a really, a really bad hamstring injury. Right. To be fair, which is a shame. But I mean, to be fair, like, dude, you couldn't have, you couldn't, no, no way, um, they could have. He's, he's gone and played like quarterfinals, no. in Europa League against Chelsea and stuff like that. I know it, it's, it's great, and he played against. Uh, he, he left when he was ready to play Arsenal as well. He signed for uh, Malmo, but no, it's great for him. Uh, he's a great boy. I got him brilliant with Freddie. I actually spoke to him. Uh, probably about six months ago, see how he was when he was in Sweden. He's married a Scottish girl. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, gear. <laughs> Aye. So it, it was way hard when it was when it was there. So no, good on the wee man. Uh, I'm delighted for him because he was a genuine, genuinely top guy and a, a, a fantastic football player. Uh, it, it just shows you that you get a release for PSG and had a few kicks and, and managed to rise up and end up playing top level football again. Aye, and I mean, there's a few Aye, players in that in that squad that have gone on to do well for themselves, haven't there? Obviously, I know Jim and Jim and Midge were a bit. No, Jim and Midge were there, weren't they? Or were they a bit before that? Jim was Midge, were they? Jim, no, Jim was not Jim. No, Jim, sorry, they weren't there. No, they weren't there. That squad would have been your starting eleven would have been Gats and goals, uh, mm-hmm. Scott Taggart, uh, Wally Dyer, Mark McLaughlin, Kevin Rukovich, Martin Hardy, Freddie. Uh, Tidza, O'Brien, Graham, and me up top. Tidza's that one that's gone on and had a good career for himself. Aye, Tidza had a good career. You know, uh, he's, he's, he's playing with Kelty Hearts at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, albeit, I think that's, that's a financial decision. They could have got a few quid, to be honest. But uh, Michael Tidza could still go and play championship you know, in, in, in a sitting midfield role and, in control games. With a shadow of a doubt, 30 year old, fit as anything, absolutely shredded physique wise, looks after himself. Uh, and who knows in the summer if, if I feel come in and do that. I think, I think projects like Kelty are exciting for obviously there's a financial aspect as well, which is well documented, but I think projects like that are quite good as well, aren't it? Like it gives players a bit of enthusiasm to try and obviously go and win stuff and progress as well. It does, uh, but for me, Going there financially, you're winning the, the what's it called, the league? Lowland, Lowland League. Lowland League, sorry, yeah. You're winning the Lowland League. No disrespect to that again, but what's your ambition? Do you want to go and try and win a champ- the championship? Or is it a League One or you know, whatever level you're playing at? There's no better feeling at whatever, le- whatever level you're playing at, whether it's amateur, junior, non-league, pro. You winning a league with a team is unbeatable at any level. Uh, you played with the boys all year round, through thick and thin, and that's that's the, the end goal. Uh, but I like I'd like to see Tids back into a championship team that's you know needing a central a central midfielder who can can use the ball well uh, and and set up uh, create or sorry create opportunities uh, for strikers and for, for players like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm guessing the way you spoke about that season at Morton. The fact that uh, you just didn't go on to win that, I'm guessing, obviously, you, you, you'll lament a wee bit that they didn't add quality, but I'm guessing you regret a wee bit that you didn't, that you didn't go on and win it. Aye, the, the regret was there, but the, you, you can only piss, well, I was going to say something there, but maybe better not say it. You can only use what you've got. Aye. Uh, and like I said, they'll start 11. It was a good start 11. Uh, but when you have to put in players who maybe younger, know quite the quality of the first team, because but because you've no option, uh, that's that's why mate. That's that's why you you don't win leagues. And with uh, Patrick Thistle doing the opposite, adding experience, players who went right into the squad and started into a team that's already fighting for the title. That that's the difference. You know, we're here a winning the league or losing the league, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, going on, well, obviously, you've had the first spell at Morton, Dundee, then you've went back to Morton. You've then gone back and got a club back into um, back into the championship, which is which must have been good. That was under Jim Duffy, wasn't it? It was. That, uh, I'd come back, left Dundee in the January. Uh, I'd torn a push it against Celtic for Dundee and was out for a long period of time. Then I got a phone call for Jim Duffy. My agent spoke to his listen, but what might offer you a player coach role? You want to go back? I went, well, aye. I sorted a wee bit out of my payoff for Dundee. Uh, we went to Morton, but just at the t- as I was coming back for Dundee, I had sciatica uh, in, my, in, your back, uh, in my back. And when I came into Morton, I was just wasn't right. And I was like, listen, I'm, I'm struggling here. So I ended up, I played the first two games or three games High as a kite with, with painkillers. And the gaffer said, Listen, you can't keep your own life, you're going to end up constipated and uh, things. I said, Aye. I said, I know that. It's, I said, I can get a jag, an epidural on my back, it'll relieve it, I'll be back playing. 
within two weeks. And I got that. And uh, I, I got back playing. I think I scored six goals that year. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I know I scored three, two, three goals in my first two games. Am I right? I'm unsure. Uh, so that was a good start then. I think we, we played Stenhouse Muir. We were, were breaking our 2 0 down at home. And we came back 1 3 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, or was it Stenny? It was here, one of the two. Uh, and that sort of spurred us on to go over the line. Uh, again, albeit a year exactly from the day when I won a title in the last game of the season at Dundee, I was in the same situation at Morton. Uh, and we beat, you know, the result three, Peterhead 3 3 1. Mm-hmm. That Capo as well, pitch again. Scenes. Five, five and a half thousand, six thousand there. It was great. Capo is fantastic when it's full, isn't it? Like I've, I've yeah. only experienced it with a couple of thousand in, but I can only imagine what it's like when it's absolutely rocking. No, it's great. It's great when it's uh, when it's full, uh, especially when you're you're on the winning side. And the fan, the fans at Morton as well are so passionate. Like they're in a they're in a league of their own, really, aren't they? Like I think Inverclyde as a whole, kind of obviously having only having Morton there. It's the, the potential for that for that club is huge for for the right people coming in there. I totally agree with you there. Uh, you've got a good fan base there. It's just I think we would happen if if Morton were on winning ways away again, they would come back. If you get good management, good structure under the club, they would definitely come back. And and if you're trying to get promotion to Premier League, or even if you achieve that. You're looking. I'm thinking, if you're winning top of the championship, you're getting you're getting three or four thousand. If you're in the last ten games to go, if you get a chance to win that league, you're getting three or four thousand. Uh, you go to the prem, you're getting a steady, I think four or five every week. Uh, it's, and that's just I policy just home fans because you've got the away fans to fill the is it the Dublin end. Mm-hmm, the Dublin uh, end. You, you, they'll fill that. Uh, that will fill uh, easily fill. Then the bigger clubs like Rangers, Celtic coming, Aberdeen will take, uh, I would say less than Aberdeen because the, the, the distance they've got to come. Rangers, Celtic would take probably a more, full, section. full section, more than what Morton will probably have, to be honest. And I mean, but that's, I, that's I, another right. day. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, no, of course. And I mean, with a fan, fans group coming in in the summer, it's the, 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 there's so many ways for them to get it right, isn't there? To kind of get the club back to where it needs to be. Aye, but have they got a structure and a plan in place? Uh, have they got the finances to do it? You know, it's all right saying it's fans and this and that. You need you need to have a, a, a strategy and, and, a, and a plan in place, a budget in place to do all the things that they want or, or what you hear is going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure about it. I'd need to... See the maybe no, maybe, aye, maybe need to know a bit more about it. Uh, you know who who who's who's making the, the decisions. Who's the decision maker there? Uh, who picks the manager? Who picks the who's the chief exec? Or, you know that sort of structure of the club behind the scenes. It's sorry mm-hmm. having a decent manager in, but if you're not going to give him rope to go and do what he needs to do, then you may as well have somebody that's never played the game before. Get in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Um, obviously, after Martin, you've you've uh, had spells at, at Clyde and, and still in Albion. Um, how is obviously that's part time football and making the adjustment from full time football to part time football is quite a quite a change, isn't it? It was, uh, and I learned that the part time players that are playing in League One Championship and League Two and that you know a, a lot of a lot of respect for them going to work. 12 hour shift and having to go to training after it. You know, it's it's tough. But total respect to them, the ones who do it and the ones who kick on from it, if they start off part time to go full time, then they thoroughly deserve it because it's hard, hard going. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoyed uh, playing part time, uh, due to just the, the less less training I did, you know, due to my injuries, my knee, and it probably bought me another, another three year in the game, if I'm telling you the truth. And sometimes it is making decisions like that that not only help you physically, also help you mentally as well. Because the, the the frustrations are just getting carrying injuries or wee niggles or knocks all the time. It, it, it does take its toll, doesn't it? It does. Uh, the training twice a week. Well, at Clive and I went. I was only training once a week because of my coaching job at Rangers. Uh, I train on a Thursday, play Saturday, and that would be it. But before my training, 
uh, on a Tuesday with the kids at Rangers, I would do I'd go on a spin bike and do things in there or the gravity machine. So I was getting used to the, the facilities in there. So I was taking over. Um, and I had a good season that year we, we played. Uh, and end up I ended up becoming manager, we joint manager for four months. Uh, and we we managed to keep the club up. Uh, and I had, then I had my, my old teammate Dave McKay at Dar Albion for me. Yeah, uh, and being manager, like going uh, again from what, midway through a season from player to then managing, again, that's obviously something Midges had to do this year. But um, like for, you, for, for yourself, how did you find that? It's obviously quite a change. I loved it. I loved it, to be honest. I just wish that there was no there was no window to bring him in. We could only bring a couple of loan signers in. Uh, I brought David Goodwill in, uh, uh, albeit all the, the, the shade that was happening previously before mm-hmm. uh, I made the decision with the chairman to bring him in because he's a he was a premiership player playing in League Two uh, and he's still he's still at Clyde now I think it's his fifth year at Clyde uh, I brought in Kerr Waddle who was in loan at Morton yep. you remember uh, I brought him in from Dundee who was excellent for us and Kyle Gooley who's the Hamilton number two now so I managed to use the, the loans quite fairly well and they players definitely Added boost in the in surviving that season. I I mean well obviously good day at Clyde. It's it's like a match made in heaven, isn't it? It's been a chance for him just to kind of get back playing football and back to scoring goals, which is what he's needed, isn't it? I if 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 I was a Morton, I would have signed Goody a couple of years ago. No, I think I've about no it. brainer, isn't it? No brainer, no brainer. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of people, you know, think about the. Uh, opinions and stuff. The stuff that's happened, and that's that's not my my business to comment on. Or whatever. No, he came in, he came in to Clyde, did an amazing job for me, and uh, he's still he's probably a Clyde legend now. Well, as captain, I think he's one of the top scorers ever as well, which is just kind of shows you. And you, 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 I mean, for yourself personally, you must be quite chuffed that you've had that sort of you, you've had that sort of influence on the not on the club, but for somebody to have that spark there. It was, it was, to be honest, it was simple. It was way too good for that level. Uh, and it was always going to run right in League Two. And it does, it runs right in League One at the times as well. Uh, you know, I'd like to see good to go championship again with better players running about him. I think he could do it easily. But yeah, I think he's he's well looked after at Clyde. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's got a job and all that now and, and, and fair play to him. He's got a young kid. But no, good, he was a, a top player. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic boy, as as well. You know, he gave his all in training and gave his all in match day. He'd tell he'd been at the top level, so it was it was an easy decision to bring him in to, to play. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, it's looking at League Two players, it's that's a tougher decision. But you know, you've played Premier League and played Premier League in England, and so it's a no brainer to come to play. And then obviously still in Albion as well for a for a year, wasn't it? Two years, I was at Stone Two years, sorry, two years. Right. Uh, yeah, again, again, part-time with obviously Dave McKay and people like that. So, I, I, I've spoke to people who've played for Stone and Albion and they've said, uh, good club to be at. Yeah, I think it was Squib, Mark McKenzie. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, he, he, he spoke quite well about his time, obviously said that maybe some managerial changes didn't go, go down well between folk or whatever, but apart from that, it was another good club to play for. Aye, a fantastic club. It's a, it's a good location as well. We've got a great facility. Uh, they got a fantastic pitch, which is well well looked after by a full time groundsman. They've got the the gym, the peak gym across the road, which the players get access to. Uh, with swimming pool, proper spin spin classes, a lot. Uh, the only thing when I was there was the astro turf they used was horrendous. It was twelve year old or something needed a new astro turf around the corner, which is. Uh, I think that's the Stirling Council's sort of uh, shout. They, they, they've got to put that down. It's not nothing to do with, with Stirling Albion. Uh, but in, when Kevin Rukovic, Kevin Rukovic came in, another ex-teammate of mine, uh, he moved us to a school further along, maybe five minutes walk further along, and it was a brand new Astro, and we managed to get that uh, on a Thursday. So that was decent. And a good way to, like, I mean... <laughs> You scored a couple of goals there, didn't you? As much as 
um, when you've scored goals, wherever, wherever you've gone. So it must have been a just nice, not so much see out your career because that's kind of that's that's not really the right way to put it. But it's nice to kind of just no go out and not be on, not not kind of do yourself an injustice if that makes sense. I I think it, the, the latter stages of my career was to fulfil but enjoyment in the game with no as much pressure. Although I want to win every game I want to, I want to win. Uh, I want to score goals. Uh, but no, it was. I know what you're. I know what you're saying there. Uh, I never took it for granted with, mm-hmm. with, that I had the opportunity to play until I was 39. Uh, when I went, even when I went left, I left Stirling. Uh, it was it was great just to maybe relax a little bit on a front where it's not your daily job. I was I was coaching and I was working in a children's home as well, so it was it was a wee bit different from your your full time football environment. Uh, it's not as intense. It's not as like it's not the like, the demands there from what would be near the Rangers. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's exactly that. You know, part time you can get a wee bit of leeway. Definitely. And I mean, now you're working for uh, CAA base. That's obviously a football agency, isn't it? Yeah, what, made, it was, uh, what made you want to do that? Base, base soccer. I, should get, I, I get an approach. Uh, probably just start at the end of February, probably, to see if I'd be interested in doing it. Uh, I knew I was always retiring this, in the summer there. So... I, I was at East Stirling. Uh, I was on quite quite a good salary for part time football. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was coaching at the perform the performance school, the SFA performance school, uh, Kilmarnock uh, with James Grady, and I was coaching at Rangers Academy, 16s. So I had three sort of jobs, uh, but I knew that the, the football ones playing was coming to an end because I wanted to retire and concentrate my coaching. Uh, but the coaching one was. They were both zero hour contracts. So when I got offered to go to base, it was a, a recruitment role up in Scotland. Uh, salaried, expense, you know, everything. It was a full contract. Mm-hmm. And it was more security in it. In fact, thank goodness I did because a week after starting, leaving a week after joining in the middle of March, uh, we went into lockdown. And zero hour contract at the school, performance school, sorry, and Rangers. I was never getting paid. Mm-hmm. So, a blessing in disguise, aren't it? Aye, so it, it, it was arranged to leave the, the coaching. Uh, I always wanted to be a first team coach, assistant manager, or first team manager. Uh, I didn't see myself being a coach, uh, youth coach, all my days. And it's just difficult to get the gig or an offer of a gig uh, to you when you've not got the first team experience. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah. if you, and when you're young, you've just finished your career. You've got that feel of the dressing room. You're still in touch in distance for the dressing room where you know what the boys want. Then you you know what you need to give over. So I think youth now is the fresh ideas and rather than, uh, they say, the old school dinosaurs who keep doing the rounds. Uh, I think clubs should maybe have a wee look at youth and, and, and have a go and uh, see some of their ideas and, and what they think they can implement and change the, the dynamics of your club. But that's that's just me. No, I think I think you're totally right because you see, you see the decisions. Obviously, Gerard the Rangers is the most notable one, isn't it? Like the success that, all right, this will be the first time this year that he's probably won a title. Like the success that he's had for somebody so young who's only been he was only at Liverpool's 18s, wasn't he? Before he's came to Rangers, like it shows you, it shows you new ideas actually have a pretty good chance of working. I will think. What he's done well is he's, he's come in inexperienced, but he's brought in a top coach in Michael Beale, who's uh, one of the best going about. Uh, uh, so he's, he's brought a good mix. He's got Gary Mack in there for maybe for the older head advice. And he's got Tom Coulshaw in there as a friend and, and trusted advisor if anything goes wrong. Uh, but no, he, he's, built, he's built a nice wee team run about him. And I think that's important. When, when, when you go into a club, you need to build... You need to try have your, your your wingman, your assistant, somebody who you can trust and could tell you, disagree with you. Your wingman's got to disagree with you to then use to find a solution or an idea how to fix it. 
There's no point being a yes man because it doesn't work for anybody. If you if you if you kind of tell me that you think that's the wrong tactics, I think we should change this. Then you've got to throw in grenades to me where it's got to get me thinking. What's the best way here? Mm -hmm. Then come to a conclusion like, okay, brilliant. I, I, I take your advice on, but ultimately it's me. It's going to decide. I get a final decision, and I decide what I roll with. And ultimately, that's what's worked this season for Rangers, isn't it? Like they've they've had the two years of getting the players in, implementing yeah. their style of football, and now this year it's all just it's as you said, it clicks, and then it just it just continues to to roll. Yeah, yep, totally. It just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, so it obviously. CAA bases. Are you trying to bring players in then, or are you keeping players in your own roster or whatever? No, but we've got a. We've got, the company's massive. Uh, I'm working based in Scotland, and I'm I'm looking to build my own portfolio of clients. Uh, I'm trying to get the, 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 the sort of next generation coming through, sixteen year olds up, uh, that I think are going to really hit the, the, the need advised and they can really hit the ground running. And, and hopefully have long careers because it's it's a long term thing we're in it for. It's no oh come in, we'll do your deals. <laughs> See you later. No, we're there for sixteen and hopefully to the end of their career. Then if it's management they go into a coaching we guide them through that as well. So uh, that's that's it. We've got me and my colleague Elliot Fallingham, who mm -hmm. we've got you know, Elliot's been doing it for nine years since he was eighteen, uh working with John Viola at the start and, and setting up his own company, then getting approached by base to go and work there as a senior agent. So Alex, he's right. He's he's right at the, the top of his game in Scotland. You know, he's, he's very very good. He's got Qatar internationals. He's got uh, Iranian internationals doing deals in out Iran, Iraq. Uh, so he's he's got he knows the market. If, if and and he's guiding me up here for for the market up here, what he thinks is best for for us. So it's it's good. No, it's good working together. And, it's a, it's a, like I said, it's a massive, massive company. I think it's the ninth year in a row there that the Ford magazine have been voted the most successful, profitable uh, sports agency in the world. So, Jesus, that's a stat now. Yeah, but if, there's <laughs> different sectors to it. There's, 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 there's the soccer, as they say. Mm -hmm. There's NFL, there's baseball, there's basketball. Then you've got the singing side, where it's like Ed Sheeran, Beyonce, Rick Ross. Then you've got the acting side. Brad Pitt, mm -hmm. Tom Hanks, uh, you know, Naomi Watts, it's just, it's just, it just keeps going on and on. Uh, so it's it's crazy to realise the, the size of the company that we've got. Mm -hmm. So like for you personally, what are you looking for in a player then? Like obviously like, agents could just, agents could like sometimes fall foul of just picking up anybody for the sake of their sale, can't they? Like, because sometimes agents are seen as the enemy, but I'm guessing you're, you've, you've had the playing experience, so you now want to do things the right way. In a sense, well, it works both ways. I can advise them and, and insult its role regarding contracts wise, and I can advise them because I've coached at elite level in Scotland. I've got my A license, UFA license, I've had it for seven years now. I've been relevant in the game with, with Rangers Academy, going to some of the top tournaments, coaching some of the best young players that are coming through. Young Leon King, who made his debut not long ago, Nathan Patterson, Keon Dixon, uh, you know, the, the Josh McPay, the, the list is, is endless. Uh, it's just, I, just I like to think that I can advise them going forward, uh, with with where it be the next step in their career, or the step or, or at that present time what they need to do, you know. And I think we, as a company, we're in a good position to advise that due to what we've done. But mm. I've got uh, there's. There's young players that I know are good enough out there, and I've got a few on board now. Uh, but it will take three or four years before things start to to pan out, and, and you, you hear more of them. I'd be looking forward to that. <laughs> Some of the exclusives you're giving me there. <laughs> well, there were any names revealed up. Uh, until then, until then. But I mean, as you, you name dropped there, obviously Josh McPaik and Nathan Patterson, Leon King. I've, I was lucky enough to watch Josh McPake in the in the flesh for the last six months until he went down to Harrogate. Like, just just how good can these boys be? Like, because obviously Nathan's knocking on the North Rangers first team. Josh has excelled out in his loan spells. And obviously Leon's just made his debut against Falkirk. Right. Uh, well, well, we've not got Nathan Patterson uh, as a company. I, I I just coach Nathan. Uh, yeah, but we've got Leon and Josh. You know, Josh is a, Josh could be brilliant. 
uh, if he wants to be. You know, he's got the ability. Uh, and Kevin Thompson, who's, who's, who's coach is, he says he's, he excites him every single day he trains with him. Uh, you know, he, he excites me. He, he, he just does things off the cuff. He's powerful. He's got he's got every attribute to be a top, top player. Whereas Leon's 16. He's a big boy. He's got unbelievable ability. He's got great potential. But it's about nourishing that, the, the fine details, each of them, which they'll, go, they'll get in, in at Rangers. Uh, Josh just now at Harrogate, but then he'll come back to Rangers. Mm-hmm. And just sort of polish up the finer things that can make them top players uh, going forward, whether it, it beat Rangers or it beat the next level, where, where, where things are. Uh, uh, their career might go in. And they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Morton, Josh st- stuck out like a sore thumb, but he, he does have the ability to kick on even past Rangers, doesn't he? Uh, he's, 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 again, he's a, a fantastic talent, uh, but he's got to do it on a more consistent basis now. Uh, he said, I think, four good games, five good games doing a Harrogate. Let's go and c- can he have 20 good games and get noticed, then go back to Rangers pre season on the front foot, go back really fit, lean, and give it a right good go to get in the first team. If it's not to be, then it's not to be. But it, then he kind of come back and say, oh, I never, I never tried, uh, I, I, I basically, I have no regrets. That's a thing. I don't think you should have regrets. He's got to go and give it his all and we'll see how things go for there. No, of course. Of course. And I mean, obviously at the start of this, you obviously said when you were coming through as a young lad at Rangers, the 10 was, the 10 was stopped by Celtic and now, you as a fan, you're seeing your team stop the ten. You're, you're seeing it go full circle. How does how does that make you? How does that make you feel? Uh, well, obviously, as, as a fan growing up, it's not hiding. I, I, I was Rangers, and like I said to you before, uh, do I want Rangers to win? Yes, I want them to win the league. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say that. But my job now, yeah, I'll always be a Rangers fan, but I don't work for Rangers. I, yeah, work you for, work first. I, I work for our clients. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to get the best out of Rangers for our clients, whether it be Celtic, Hearts, you know, Man U, Chelsea, whatever. I've got to get the best, uh, at whatever club it is, the best deal for our clients, the best advice from the coaches at every, uh, each club for our clients, you know. So it's, yeah, being a Rangers fan is all right, but it, it, there'll be... No love lost when when you've you've got to go and work on behalf of your client. If you get me, ah no, of course, oh, of course. Oh, I just I, I, I was I wasn't even meaning in terms of it was you representing the, the agency. Just you, like you yourself as Peter McDonald. Like obviously you were there. So you, you you you're going to experience both sides of the coin. That maybe only players in the squad at that time would have felt back then to then now type thing. There's going to be a oh, I, there, I, there's I, going to be a bit of satisfaction there, isn't there? But it swings and roundabouts now. You know, the big thing is if Rangers win the league this year, can he kick on and, and do a two or three in a row or a four in a row, five in a row, back up to a nine in a row, ten in a row? You know, I, th- I don't think that will happen for a long, long time if it does happen again. So, uh, a ten in a row or a nine in a row team. No, I, I think the way that, that, that Brendan Rodgers came in and just gave Celtic that whole sense of professionalism and consi- it was consistency. It wasn't just the professionalism, it was this, that high standard of performance week in, week out for 70 weeks, wasn't it? Aye, but the players they brought in were, were better than our top draw players at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were coached by uh, a very, very good coach and manager. But no, I think that's everything I had for you lined up. I hope it wasn't hope it wasn't too bad for you. No, it's perfect, mate. Thank you very much, Chris. It was enjoyed that. No, thank you for coming on. It's, it's brilliant to have, to have had somebody yeah. somebody of your calibre come on. I really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. I can't